Hi folks, this is David Fine from Keys Moths. It is my pleasure to present to you the most stunning moth in South Florida, I am very confident to say, and possibly the United States. It's the Faithful Beauty Composia Fidelissima. Guys, this is our uh, channel's mascot. It's right here, guys, on my logo. The Keys Moths mascot is the Faithful Beauty because it is a South Florida, Florida Keys resident, and it is beautiful, and it actually spits poison from its head. Check this out. Guys, I remember like it was yesterday, being a 12-year-old boy for the first time seeing the Faithful Beauty Moth. I was in Gumbo Limbo Nature Center in Boca Raton, just walking down a hammock trail in that, in that nature center, and I remember seeing this magnificent, what I thought was a butterfly, black butterfly with white spots, red dashes, and a beautiful metallic flash that kept fluttering, and it was flying very slowly and lazily by me. I'll never forget what the feeling was when I saw that for the first time. Couldn't believe what I saw. And it's now my privilege to present the entire life cycle to you because we raised them and we're gonna show you all about them. The species name of this moth, Fidelissima, gets its name from the Latin word fidelity or faithful one, Fidelissima. And why is it called that? It's probably because of its red, white, and blue uh, coloration. Some people call it the Uncle Sam moth uh, because it lives in the United States and those are the colors of our American flag. Sexes are very similar on the adults. Um, they range between two to three inches on the wingspan. Females are a little bit larger than males, have a little bit more robust wing shape than the males do, but both uh, sexes have this incredible black, jet black base coloration with this slew of white polka dots on the forewing and hind wing, and three right, bright red, blood red spots on the forewing uh, inner margin uh, that are very, very bright, bright red. Now, the blue coloration, metallic blue, it's incredible. The hind wing especially has a bright metallic blue, flashy coloration. Some specimens have it on the forewing as well. The females actually have a little bit of a duller coloration on that blue. The males are a little bit more flashy, a little bit more showy on that blue coloration, but both sexes are magnificently colored. Underside, you flip them under, the, the abdomen is actually has some white stripes and the thorax and the abdomen have that metallic blue coloration as well. And the legs and the head all have white polka dots on them. Magnificent moth, guys. It's just a phenomenal moth. And the caterpillar is actually just as impressive. Let's talk about the life cycle. The caterpillar in this species is equally as impressive as the adult. Well, maybe not equally, but they are bright pink. Bright reddish pink coloration. And they have five deep purple bands around them. They're not hiding from anybody. And we're gonna talk about their poisonous nature in a minute but they're also gregarious, so they feed together in clumps of 10, 20, 30 uh, individuals, and they're just magnificently colored caterpillars. And so when they're younger, they're all feeding together. As they grow older, they probably eat themselves out of house and home, and they will venture and crawl away from the rest of their clan and look for uh, some other host plant to feed on and finish out their life cycle. The Faithful Beauty Moth can be locally common in the Pinelands and hardwood hammocks of south, southernmost Florida in the Florida Keys and Miami-Dade counties. Now, they used to live down the southern Keys on the Pine Rocklands of Big Pine Key and Key Deer Refuge. And uh, I'm gonna talk about this in a little bit, but it's been a long time since I've seen one down there. In fact, 1998 was the last time I saw one in the lower Keys, but a, a beautiful freshly emerged female was just photographed by Christy Killam on No Name Key uh, just in 2020, April 2020. So that's great. That shows that they're still living down there. The host plant is everywhere down there. But Northern Keys, they're fairly common in the hammocks. Pine Rocklands in Miami-Dade County, down in Collier County, uh, in Everglades National Park. 
This moth is actually a very common moth. I found them in Broward County. Like I said, I mentioned uh, Boca Raton, that's Palm Beach County. I found them in Boynton Beach in uh, beach dune habitats. And they've been known to be found all the way up through Indian River counties. And the further north you go, the rarer they get because the host plant is not quite as abundant the further north you get. They have to substitute host plants. And another thing though, as farther north you get, the larger those white spots are. So that's pretty cool, but they're very hard to find the further north you go. Much more common in Miami-Dade County. And they are also found in the Caribbean and in Cuba as well. The Faithful Beauty is actually a day-flying moth. Yep, that's a moth that flies during the day, but they're also active at nights. They show up at UV lights, at black lights from time to time. But the best way to find them would be to visit some of the pine rocklands or tropical hardwood hammocks of Miami-Dade County or their upper keys in the late afternoon. Probably between 4 and 5 p.m. is their peak flight time. You can see them zipping around. Uh, throughout the rest of the day, they tend to be a little bit more lethargic, probably a little bit more active during overcast days when it's more cloudy. But when it's sunny out, they like to sit on the undersides of leaves and hide until later in the afternoon when they become more active. I see copulation taking place in captivity and in the wild in the late afternoon. Females lay eggs, uh, clusters of dome-shaped yellow eggs on the leaves of the host plants. Host plants include bay bean, leafless sinatrum, but mainly devil's potato, Echites umbellata. That's the main one, guys. It's a vine that lives in the hammocks and pine rocklands, lower keys, southern Miami-Dade County. It's got opposite leaves. It's actually, the flower looks a lot like an oleander flower, and that's interesting because uh, caterpillars will also eat oleander, which is not a native, but that's what we raise them on in captivity. It's a lot easier to uh, cultivate the oleander and raise them on that. But unlike some of the other Arcteids that feed on oleander and actually will live in the urban areas on oleander, cultivated oleander plants and gardens and so on, the Faithful Beauty does not seem to uh, cultivate on it naturally, so it sticks to its natural habitat with its natural Echites host plant. The Echites vine devil's potato gets its name from its seed pod. It has this very impressive long opposite shaped seed pod which opens up and sends a whole bunch of seeds out and that's where it gets its name from. It's common grown in the pine rocklands and it grows along the ground. It grows and climbs up pine trees and that's the my favorite place to look for faithful beauty larvae and eggs are on the Echites vine that grows up the pine trees in the rock pine rockland. It's the easiest way to find them. The larvae start off their life cycle in clusters of 20 to 30 individuals and they feed together on the underside or upper side of the Echites vine leaf and will eat until about third or fourth instar and that, at that time the caterpillars will separate. I think that they eat themselves out of house and home because there's not a lot of biomass on these vines. So what'll happen is that amount of different larvae will consume all the leaves on a vine and then that'll send the caterpillars crawling around until they find uh, more food plant for themselves to eat. When the caterpillar is ready to pupate, it will crawl away from its vine, find some leaf litter or a convenient place to pupate, and spin a pretty impressive silken uh, housing for itself. And when it pupates, the pupa is like this little reddish brown pill, but it's got hundreds of these little, uh, very stiff yellow hair-like appendages that stick out from the pupa. And what those do is it catches on the silk strands of the cocoon and it holds it in place and suspended in air uh, with those little hair-like appendages, pretty cool. Stays in the pupa for two weeks, two and a half weeks until they emerge. Adults fly all year round in South Florida. They're a little bit more common in the winter and spring months from my uh, observations, but they can be found all year long in South Florida. In the Northern Keys, the Faithful Beauty is fairly commonly seen in butterfly gardens. Uh, a lot of people think it's a butterfly because of the way it flies. It flies just like a butterfly, uh, but it is a moth. Day flying moths, go moths. <laughs> and uh, Lower Keys, like I said, I haven't seen them there in uh, over 20 years. But Christy Killam found a beautiful, freshly emerged female nectaring on Pisonia rotundata 
and No Name Key just this past year in April. So I'm glad that they're down there and we look forward to seeing some more faithful beauties down in the lower keys. We found this species nectaring on a wide variety of, of nectar sources. They love white alkaline flowers. I think males use them for sperm production. So check out uh, some Bidens if you have Cordia glabrosa, um, Brazilian pepper, they'll go to Brazilian pepper. And so I use sweet almond. It's, a, it's, it's not necessarily a South Florida native, but it grows like, like crazy down here and they, they absolutely love it in my yard. So uh, they love those alkaline based flowers and they visit gardens fairly regularly down in southernmost Florida. This species can actually easily be raised in captivity, guys. If you find a wild female, uh, all you have to do is put her in a screened in enclosure and she'll lay eggs all day and uh, you can let her go after a couple hours because if you just put a stem of the host plant inside the enclosure, she'll lay eggs and you can let her go. Caterpillars eat oleander, like I said, and they eat it very happily and it's very easy to raise them and they're very resilient. They don't virus very easily um, and they'll eat pretty much any part of the oleander plant. Uh, very easy moth to raise in captivity. Once you get the, the chrysalis to emerge, uh, they actually copulate in captivity very easily as well. All you have to do is put them in a screened enclosure with uh, some nectar source or some maybe some sugar solution, sugar water solution for the adults to feed on. And usually within the first 24 hours of being in a screened in enclosure, male and female will find each other in the late afternoon and copulate in, in captivity and she can produce eggs uh, starting the next day. One thing, however, when raising this species in captivity, our experience has been that after two or three generations, something about the genetic uh, integrity starts to, to decline. So uh, they actually start to die off and they don't do as well in the second and third generations once they've been in captivity long. So they probably need new genes being brought in. Uh, and so that's just one of our observations that I thought would be interesting for this video. So now I wanna talk about the defense mechanisms of this moth. Uh, moths that are typically brightly colored, flashy colors, butterflies as well, pretty much anything in the insect world, if it has those flashy colors, chances are it's toxic or poisonous and the Faithful Beauty is no different. It's actually highly poisonous. Guys, they feed on plants in the Aposinaceae family, which are known to contain the following toxins, including cyanide, so it's very, very toxic plant. In fact, here are a list of the known side effects from oleander poisoning. Listen to this list of side effects. So, human reactions caused from uh, this type of, uh, these types of toxins from oleander include skin rash, blurred vision, vi visual disturbances, diarrhea, nausea, stomach pain, vomiting, loss of appetite, regular, irregular and slowed heartbeat, weakness, low blood pressure, confusion, dizziness, headaches, fainting, depression, drowsiness, lethargy, loss of appetite, halos and vision, and even death. <laughs> okay, uh, home guides at uh, sfgate.com. Uh, we have a link in our bio is, uh, is the place where I found this information. But guys, that is a long list of side effects. Sounds like most of our drugs that we buy uh, <laughs> listed on uh, these commercials that we see, right? So as the caterpillars feed on these toxic plants, guys, they store the poisons and toxins in glands. And then later on, as adults, check out what the Faithful Beauty Moth does with these toxins. When disturbed, if you were to actually pick one of these moths up, it actually emits this really sticky, yellow, frothy foam from a gland in the upper thoracic region and other glands in the wings and so on. And this foam is all these toxins combined and it really, really smells really badly. And in fact, every time I've ever handled the Faithful Beauty Moth, you get it all over your hands. It smells real bad. Never put it in my mouth. <laughs> And uh, I have a feeling that whenever a bird or a lizard would grab one of these moths, it's gonna get this yellow frothy toxin in its mouth and it's not gonna be a good day for the predator. So what, hopefully the bright colors that they display will show all the predators, hey, I'm poisonous, don't eat me. The caterpillars, same thing, bright red, pink, purple caterpillars. They're saying, don't eat me, I'm poisonous, I'm advertising I'm here. I'm not trying to hide from anybody. And that's the MO of the Faithful Beauty. 
And most of the time when they're flying, they're really not in much of a hurry. They kind of just float along through the uh, pine forests and the tropical hardwood hammock edges. And uh, nobody's really messing with the faithful beauty except maybe some of us with cameras. So let's talk about another defense mechanism that the faithful beauty has. In fact, the faithful beauty belongs to a family of moths called tiger moths or Arctiidae. Many Arctiid moths actually have a tympanic membrane and a sound emitting organ on their thorax. So what does that mean in English, Dave? Uh, that means that a tympanic membrane enables a moth to hear. So that's one of the big anatomical differences between a butterfly and a moth. Moths can actually hear noises and sounds and butterflies can't, butterflies are deaf. So a very big difference anatomically between a butterfly and a moth. Moths can hear, butterflies don't. But Arctiidae, moths in this tiger group family actually have sound emitting organs as well. And so what is typically known of, they use them for, is when a, uh, when a moth is flying at night, one of its main enemies is a bat, morcialago as, as the Latin Americans call them. When these uh, bats are flying around, they use echolocation to locate their prey. And that's by sending out a little chirping noise. And if you've ever been around bats as they're flying around, you hear this little chirping noise. And that chirp noise hit bounces off of a moth and lets the bat know exactly where the moth is. And the bat will is very good at listening to those noises and capturing the moth in mid-flight. Well, here's what the Arctia tiger moths do with their sound emitting organs. They actually throw decoy noises to distract the bats and actually throw the bat off. So the bat will zig when he should have zagged, the moth flies away, well, at least theoretically, uh, and that's their defense mechanism with bats. But also, a lot of tiger moths and arctiids will actually use these sound emitting organs actually for mating and actually how the females call for the males and the males respond with noises. So it's very interesting, um, very peculiar apparatuses that these moths have and the Faithful Beauty has these tympanic membranes and these sound emitting organs. So we're actually gonna do some follow-up studies with that and we're gonna let you know about what we find out with and how the Faithful Beauty moth utilizes this tympanic membrane along with the sound emitting organ. So really cool stuff, fascinating thing. A little bit of a longer video guys on the Faithful Beauty, but I think, I think it's worth the watch. So that's about all the time we have for today. Guys, the Faithful Beauty, spectacular moth. Guys, check that bad boy out. That's our mascot. The Faithful Beauty is our proud mascot of our Keys Moths YouTube channel and all of our research, but um, guys, stunning moth, iridescent blue. Uh, hope you can see one in the wild sometime and maybe after watching this video, you've learned enough so you can go and find them yourself. So uh, guys, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the video or to our channel and hit the bell for notifications. Very important. Hit the bell, you'll get notified every time we put out a wacky worm video. We've got a ton of videos just like this one, wacky worm videos, where we're gonna elaborate on all the butterflies and moths that we have encountered in here in South Florida. And we're gonna tell you all about them, tell you some wacky, cool facts about them. Just like the faithful beauty, the good old faithful Uncle Sam moth. <laughs> uh, maybe he'll give me a break on my taxes, or maybe not. Uh, guys, but subscribe to the channel and don't forget to visit our website. It's keysmoths.com. We've got all 700 species of moths and butterflies from the Florida Keys listed there for you and photographed and all the information about them. So we hope you check us out there and hope to see you out in the field sometime. Uh, until then, take care and uh, fiddle this one. Beautiful moth. Take care. Ciao.